Hey everyone, I'm Jason, and this is your commentary on Leviticus chapter 21. This chapter is all about the rules for the priests. Specifically, it's the standards that God has set for them. It's broken down into four sections. He wants them to be clean. He wants them to be holy. He wants them to be anointed or appointed. And he wants them to be perfect. That seems like really high standard. Who can possibly live up to it? And that's the whole point. The priest, back in those times, was supposed to be a foreshadow of the coming Messiah, the one true high priest. And that it would take someone who is absolutely perfect in order to fulfill that role. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron. Tell them, A priest must not make himself unclean by going near the dead body of any of his people. But he can go near the body of a close relative. It could be his mother, father, son, daughter, or brother. He can also go near a sister who is not married. She would have depended on him because she did not have a husband. The priest can make himself unclean by going near her body, but he must not make himself unclean by going near the bodies of people only related to him by marriage. Going near them would make him unclean. We've seen this before where a priest is not allowed to go near a dead body. It would make him unclean. And yet God's making an exception here for them. He's saying if it's a close relative, a blood relative, then you're allowed to go near them. But the actual standard is that they're supposed to be set apart. They're supposed to be ministers of life and clean, not of death. That's why they're not supposed to go near dead bodies. Priests must not shave any part of their heads. They must not shave off the edges of their beards. They must not make cuts on their bodies when someone dies. Priests must be holy. They must be set apart for me. I am their God. They must not treat my name as if it were not holy. They must be holy, because they bring food offerings to me. That is my food. They must not get married to women who are unclean, because they are prostitutes. They must not marry women who are divorced from their husbands. That is because priests are holy. They are set apart for me. I am their God. Consider them as holy, because they offer up food to me. Consider them as holy, because I am holy. I am the Lord. I make you holy. Suppose a priest's daughter makes herself unclean by becoming a prostitute. Then she brings shame on her father. She must be burned to death. When God talks about his holiness, it's not just that God is nice or he's better or he's like the best idea of any of us. If you just take our characteristics and you say you're going to magnify by a hundred the best qualities. That's not what it means to be holy. It's not that God is a better version of us in every aspect. Holy means that he is set apart, that he is unique, unlike anything else. And so the priests were supposed to be set apart, unlike the world around them. When it talks about the different practices, prostitution, about cutting your beards, about cutting your body for the dead, the reason why it says not to do that is because that's exactly what the rest of the world did. And God didn't want his priests to be like the priests of other gods, the false gods. He says he wants people to know that they are different from the rest of the world. They are supposed to be set apart. They are supposed to be holy. The high priest is the one among his brothers whose head has been anointed with olive oil. He has been appointed to wear the priest's clothes. When someone dies, the high priest must not let his own hair hang loose. He must not tear his clothes to show how sad he is. He must not enter a place where there is a dead body. He must not make himself unclean. Even if his father or mother dies, he must not leave the sacred tent of the Lord to take part in burying a body. That would bring shame on the tent. The anointing oil has set the high priest apart. I am the Lord. The woman the high priest gets married to must be a virgin. He must not marry a widow or a woman who is divorced. He must not marry a woman who is unclean, because she is a prostitute. He must only marry a virgin. She must come from his own people. If he doesn't marry a virgin, he makes the children he has by her unclean. I am the Lord. I make him holy. So we see the same repetition here between he must be clean, he must be holy. But it starts off with they are anointed. If you're anointed, that means that you have a special calling in life. And these priests had a very specific calling. They're the ones who brought the sacrifices, the offerings to God. And God's telling them, Ignore everything else that's going on. You guys have a calling. 
You cannot abandon your calling. You must stay true to it. And that's why they are anointed and appointed to do that specific work for which God had called them. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron. Tell him, No man in your family line with any flaws may come near to offer food to the Lord. This is true for all time to come. No man who has any flaws can come near. No man who is blind or disabled can come. No man whose body is scarred or twisted can come. No man whose foot or hand is disabled can come. No man whose back is bent can come. No man who is too short can come. No man who has anything wrong with his eyes can come. No man who has boils or running sores can come. No man whose sex glands are crushed can come. No man with any flaws who is in the family line of Aaron, the priest, may come near me. He can't come to bring the food offerings to the Lord. If he has any flaws, he must not come near to offer food to the Lord. He can eat the holy food. He can also eat my very holy food. But because he has a flaw, he must not go near the curtain or approach the altar. If he does, he will make my sacred tent unclean. I am the Lord. I make everything holy. So Moses told all these things to Aaron and his sons. He also told them to all the Israelites. God demands that his priest is perfect, without any flaws. And we see that also mirrored not only in the priest, but in the sacrifice, that the offering presented to God must be perfect and without any flaws. It seems a little bit harsh, but we do see times in the Bible where God makes exceptions. He's not making an exception here. He's establishing a rule because this is to be a foreshadow of the Messiah. So he's giving them an idea of who that's supposed to be, what he's supposed to look like. Through Jesus, we are made whole. He heals us and allows us to come before God. This passage isn't about the individual priest. It's about the foreshadow of the Messiah. Well, that's it for our commentary on Leviticus chapter 21. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you guys next time.